Got, Got it. it. This is going to be a different kind of podcast. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Luca Beth Lounge, the cozy space for everybody who loves Lucas and Elizabeth from One Cause of Heart. Today, we have me, Jillian. And me, Div. Hi, guys. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, basically, uh, we have some feelings about last night's episode, and I know a lot of you guys do, too. So, we just wanted to jump on here and kind of, like, debrief with you, along with you. So we're just going to kind of discuss our, our thoughts about last night's episode, which is, if you're not watching this today, um, episode five, season 10, episode five. So, okay, let me go to my notes because I don't even know where to start. Um, so, so basically, I first want to say I have no problem with Lucas and Elizabeth facing some things. I have absolutely no problem with them um, having some strife that they have to work through, but I'm upset about the way that it was done or the way that it is being done. Um, So with that said, I do hope that we can give the writers the benefit of the doubt. And I hope that this podcast episode will be a moot point in a week or two when they turn it around. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> but I know everybody has some big feelings right now. So we just wanted to kind of discuss it um, together. So, um, okay so I'm gonna start with my frustration I'm gonna go back one episode because the last podcast we did covers episodes one through four and we did touch on this um but I was I'm always like I always I think give them the benefit of the doubt and I'm thinking like like there's no way they would turn this around or anything you know like I for the record, I do not think <laughs> that they're going to break up Lucas and Elizabeth. So don't go thinking that I think that. Okay. But I'm going to go back to the previous episode where Elizabeth said that she realizes that she has avoided talking about Jack with Lucas. Because like I said, we discussed this in our last podcast, but I wasn't upset about it. I was just surprised because I figured that they would have talked about that before they got engaged or before they dated, right? Like we talked about this. Um, But now after this episode, I'm going back and I'm just like, they're, I feel like they're writing both Lucas and Elizabeth totally out of character. Mm -hmm. Um, Because not only do I think that Elizabeth would have talked to little Jack about Jack, like little bits at a time, like just keeping his memory alive instead of just being like completely blindsided when he's like, what about my daddy? Where's my daddy? First of all, Elizabeth has been a teacher for a decade. She's worked with kids for how long, right? She has been a mother for what, four years now? Mm -hmm. and her husband has been gone the entire time like she's never thought about how she's gonna bring this up or like how she's gonna answer these questions ever and then and then just the whole fact that they're not incorporating Lucas as his dad in any capacity right now like they're just still on the buddy thing they're just calling each other buddy and she's not explaining to him like your daddy's in heaven but now you know Lucas and I are getting married I can't hear I can't hear it if you're concerned no there's a squirrel like right above my head oh. <laughs> <laughs> gonna draw some but I like squirrels. um keep going keep going yeah so I just I 
this episode made me more frustrated about that because now we're looking back a little bit and I, cause at that time I was just like, whatever, like, it's going to be fine. Like, you know, they, they had her say that so that we could see the conversation. Right. Which I'm assuming will still happen at some point, but we're just, we're getting so off track with their characters and who they are. Even Elizabeth, like a lot of people have been frustrated with Elizabeth for a while. I haven't really been, it's been whatever, but she is a lot different than she used to be. But Lucas, they're right there. He's not, they're writing him so out of character right now. Um, because not like it, he's the kind of guy that would be like, so tell me something about Jack. Like, tell me a little bit about Jack. Like he, he has never asked Elizabeth anything about Jack like he knows nothing about Jack they've never talked about him like he's never asked her even if she's never brought it up like he's the kind of guy that would ask her about it Uh and just knowing in canon that they haven't talked about him is like like that's where I first started I was like wait um but yeah this episode really threw me off though and then, okay, still staying on that, um, just for a minute. So, okay, so, like, when Jack, when little Jack was was smaller, like, she would show him a picture of Jack and be like, isn't, that's your daddy, isn't he handsome, you know, like, talk about him a little bit. Like, have they not talked about him at all since then? Because he's like, where's my daddy? Um, and then she asks Nathan for advice about how to tell her son about his dad. Like the town is literally full of widows who raised their kids as single mothers. And she's talking to Nathan about it. Like go to Mali in Florence and be like, hey, How did you guys deal with this? Because I'm starting to deal with these repercussions of my husband being gone. You know what I mean? (sighs) So that's where it started going off the rails for me. Um, And then just, just the fact that they had Lucas be like, oh, no need to explain. You don't need to explain. Like, isn't that just like lazy? Like lazy? I don't, ah! like that's out of character for him I mean he's said that before Uh but he knows it's important he knows it's a really important thing so like he as a person as Lucas would understand the concern and want to talk about it but they just took the easy way out and said you don't have to explain So I think, yeah, just this episode made me more frustrated about that whole thing. So I just wanted to touch on that. Okay. Um, All right. So last night's episode. First off, okay. They go on their first date since Uh that we've seen since season eight literally the first time they've gone on a date since they've been officially together Uh (laughs) and they I was legitimately confused because like okay I was so excited because she's walking up in that Union City dress and he's like I remember that dress and she's like I thought I remembered you liking it and I was like yes brilliant love that so much and then they go sit down and they cut right to Mike clearing the table and she was like dinner was great thank you and I was like I legitimately thought that they had dinner before they went to the saloon like they had dinner and then she changed into a dress and went to the saloon because they just sat down Mm -hmm. like we saw none of it none of it when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, they did eat in the saloon. (laughs) 
But like, why is it so choppy? I don't know. I don't know if it's the editing or I don't know if it's just that they were lazy and didn't write the scenes. I don't know if it got cut. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so for me, I'm more disappointed than angry, which is out of character for me, actually, because usually <laughs> I get I get furious. But this season, I don't know if it's all the other stuff going on in my life or just lack of enthusiasm for how they've been writing them uh and you know last season two I wasn't super happy about season nine um mm -hmm. so I'm just kind of like I don't like it I really don't I think I've been clear about that on Twitter but I don't know um okay so for me by the way this is a new writer Ayla Glass I'm pretty sure she has not written for the show before but I would think everything that any writer writes, any episode writer writes, that the showrunner has to approve it. Or, you know, the showrunner definitely puts her own touches to it. So mm -hmm. I'm almost wondering, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm almost wondering if the um, head writer is just rewriting the past. Like she's writing it her own way to the point where she's, I don't know, is she pretending like Elizabeth and little Jack never had a conversation about Jack? Because like this last, this past episode, it might as well have been that way, right? Like this is the first time she's talking to him about her, um, his father. Um, and then even some of the stuff that Lucas and Elizabeth are talking about are things that they should already know about each other by now. So mm -hmm. I'm just not sure what the heck's going on. Um, let me see. I wrote a bunch of stuff down because I didn't already. Um, yeah, so the date, everyone was excited about the date. I feel so bad for everybody who was just so like looking forward to that from the, I think it was in the promos since before the season started and everyone was like, oh my gosh, they're finally going on a date. They're finally going to talk about Union City. I was hoping they would call back to that conversation. That's when they had like that important conversation about um, how he wants to settle down in Hope Valley, how he wants to build a family there. Why didn't they? That's like the perfect time to be talking about that stuff. Yeah. Um, none of it. And then I'm like, they're dancing. Okay, like, why are they dancing <laughs> instead of talking? And then they show her expression where she's like so out of it. I'm like, I was having flashbacks to the glance. I'm like, why yeah. can't they ever share a dance where it's just them like looking into each other's eyes and smiling? Why is Elizabeth always freaking distracted by something else? Uh, or, you know, they're off in the background and we can't see them dance. Or the right. one time they, they danced at Jesse and Clara's wedding, that scene got cut out but yeah. we got that beautiful picture. Not that I'm like complaining about the dance thing. I'm just kind of listing it out. I don't care. I'm sure we'll get another dance scene at some point. Well, but my point is... And then it's like... Oh. <laughs> we'll all fake yeah. when it happens. Um, by yeah. the way, I do want to say that like I only watched the episode once. I haven't had a chance to watch it again. Um, and I haven't gone out of my way to make time to watch it again. So this is all based on like, my one watch of everything yeah um, I watched it I did I just rewatched it did you and there were oh, some you? things there were some things that were like okay this isn't as bad as I thought it was in some yeah. capacity so it did help though it was hard to watch mm -hmm. but yeah man okay so I'm I'll put it this way. I've already said in the last episode that I'm more of a Lucas fan than an Elizabeth fan. I am. I, I love Elizabeth. I care about her. But I started watching the show because Lucas kind of drew me in. And I just love the character. I love who he is. But yeah, so I'm I'm unhappy with Elizabeth and the way she's treated him. But I'm not just going to say this was all Elizabeth's fault. I'm just yeah. not. Yeah. I'm not. I, I get that a lot of people are frustrated with Elizabeth. Um, and yeah, I am too, but he is not blameless. And we will yeah. we'll get into that. We'll get mm -hmm. into that. And I think it's important for people to see that perspective if they haven't, whether they yeah. agree or disagree, it's up to them. But, you know, 
we'll we'll put our thoughts out there and then they can interpret it however they want um number one I did not like how Elizabeth, she almost gave him like an ultimatum. She was like, um, I'm happy here. I hope, what did she say? I hope you're happy too. I hope that means she you're said, happy too. What did she say? This is what, this is what's important to me. And I hope it is what's important for you too. Uh, and that tone, right? It was like that teacher tone. Like, yeah. and it was almost like, it better be important to you. I just, the the delivery, I I think, Aaron delivered it fine it, but it, like whatever Elizabeth was, try was trying to get across was not okay I don't think that was mm -hmm. okay because at this point he's been so patient with her right he's been Mr. freaking patient um he mm -hmm. had to put up with the Nathan nonsense he was confused he didn't know what the heck was going on there finally I think he realized that it was projection even though obviously they've never talked about Jack so I don't know. Like she hasn't actually come out and said, "Hey, Lucas, the only reason that Nathan was ever really in the picture in the background um was because yeah, I was, you know, trying to replace him with Jack. That's a harsh way to put it, but that's what she said to Nathan. Um how much more patience can this man have? Like how much more can he possibly give her? And that's what he wants, right? He wants to give her everything. Didn't he say that? He wants to give her the freaking world. What mm -hmm. more could she want? Um, and the other thing is, okay, this is going to sound kind of mean to some people, but let's be real about this. Let's be totally real about this. Lucas is a total catch. He is a total catch. And he believes in love, right? That's his big thing. He wants this, like, real passionate um, just like all encompassing love. And that's what he thinks he has with Elizabeth. Uh, that's what I think he has with Elizabeth. Um, I had a point here and I totally forgot what it was. <laughs> Dang it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's who he is. Um, so he can give that to anybody in town. He really can think about it. There are a lot of other single women in town who are unattached who don't have a past who don't have a past love I don't want to say that he's competing with Jack's memory I really don't want to say that I I don't I we need more clarity before I ever say something like that um but he could be with any other woman right like but he chose Elizabeth it's a widow who had this great big love before him he knows she's always gonna love Jack um so he knows that there's already like she's already been in love with someone he's in her heart but also that Lucas in, is in her heart too and he's willing to raise another man's child um so he's done a lot for her. He can have any other woman, any other woman. And he's chosen this woman who, for lack of a better way of saying, comes with baggage. It's not her fault, but there is mm -hmm. stuff that he has to contend with and that he has to be okay with. Um, so now he wants to give her the world. He wants to build her a house. Didn't Jack want to build her a house? So yep. why is why was she so excited about Jack building her the house and how much of this is her not wanting to move because she doesn't want to be away from Rosemary and how much of it is because of Jack because the mm -hmm. memories I would think have something to do with Jack and yeah. if they have to do with Jack I'm going to be angry I'm going to be very angry I get that she loves him I respect their history I respect their love but at this point Jack should not be an issue he, no he shouldn't I don't think he should because she she wasn't she didn't commit to Lucas for what three years because of Jack she the ring was like that that like yeah. physical reminder that she wasn't ready because she was still dealing with grieving her husband now the ring mm -hmm. is off she's committed to Lucas right she was disappointed when he didn't propose she thought he was going to propose and then she's upset because they're a pair of earrings um and she was excited about getting married to him now suddenly she's like apprehensive like now suddenly Jack is coming into play here. Like what, what is happening? I yeah. don't get it. I don't know. In in the, like part of the frustration is that like, 
So they addressed the fact that they had to talk about Jack, right? Mm -hmm. And then she goes and changes the subject on the bench. And then they go on a date Hmm. and we don't hear any of their conversation when they're having dinner. Like, can we just have this conversation now? Like, why do we have to wait? Like, why can't, can't they just start this discussion? And this can be the strife or strife the thing they have to work through because of course they're going to have to work through some stuff in order for them to grow. Right. Yes. I'm all for that. Yep. But like, let's start it now. So it's not just like one conversation and then boom, they're all better. And they're on the bridge and putting their foreheads together. Cause that's what like, you know, we're going to be fine. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But like, is it going to be one conversation and then they're fine? Like, can we just have this like start now? Like why wait to start this? Mm-hmm. Like have the conversation Mm-hmm. If if they're going to put this into the script where, oh, I've avoided talking to you about him, like it's been five years. Mm-hmm. That happened in season five. Mm-hmm. Also, Jack lived in her house for like a week yeah. before he, like they literally went on their honeymoon and he never came back. Yeah. They, I, I'm, and a week is generous. I think they spent a couple nights in her house and then he went and they went on their honeymoon and he never came home like so I don't know I don't know if the memories you're talking about is okay that being said I didn't expect them to move I didn't expect her to want to move Mm -hmm. but yeah the fact that he just assumes that she would Mm -hmm. be okay with moving like Mm -hmm. to the edge of town yeah especially when like he and and lee have developed this relationship and like he knows that how close rosemary and elizabeth are and they just had this baby and he really thinks that she's gonna be okay with moving. like i knew she was gonna be okay with moving lucas should know mm-hmm. that she wasn't mm-hmm. gonna be okay with moving yeah and they just they just wrote it as like he just assumed and okay so one episode ago they're sitting on the porch and he jokes about a five tier cake with gold leaf roses Mm -hmm. because he knew that she would hate that. He knew that she would just think that was way over the top and wouldn't want that. And he's joking about it. He's like, no, I knew you were going to say that. I was kidding. And then he goes from that last week. And then this episode, he's getting a quilt for lumber to build her a house on the outskirts of town without asking her or telling her like that doesn't make any sense because going back to like what like last season when they first said I love you they had this miscommunication and she said we know each other better than this (laughs) they've known each other for so long since the very beginning of season six they've known each other we're on season 10 he they're engaged they're getting married he knows her So that's what just like made me so, I'm like, why are they, why are they writing this in there? We've been through this already. Because this new writer is like, she's retconning a bunch of stuff. That's what I think. And which is ridiculous. Like, I feel like she's like writing it the way she wants, but that's not how you do it. When you come into a show, like 10 seasons later, you can't put your stamp on something that's already been written a certain way. Sure, you've come in, start new st- oh my gosh, start new storylines, you know, come up with new things, but don't like don't rewrite history, don't rewrite the characters to to fit your narrative. That's yes. my irritation. Yes. Um you can't change a character's character or a, char- a character's the heart essence just to yeah. create strife. You can't do that. Like, just on a whim. You can't just change a character just to create strife. Do it a different way. Make yeah. it so that, like, maybe maybe Elizabeth thinks that's cool. Like, yeah, oh, that sounds that sounds nice. But then Rosemary needs her. So then they both realize that at the same time. They see that Rosemary needs her. So they decide together to change their minds and stay. Or something like that. I don't know. Just, like... Create, create. No, finish your sentence. I'm sorry. I just, I just want it. Like, I want the strife to be different. 
this is yeah. not like it has to be in character and this is not it's not in character no it's not in character and speaking of rosemary i've always liked rosemary but this season there's rosemary overkill yeah there's rosemary overkill and i just don't understand elizabeth's constant and i mean constant need to like push all her attention on rosemary i don't get it i i and honestly i'll i'll be honest i was i've been feeling this since episode 3 sorry Hi. i'm here I'm like... um, I okay so since episode 3 i've been feeling this way like there's just so much elizabeth and rosemary elizabeth and rosemary um i was like okay episode 3 i justified it is okay baby shower this is her friends first time having a kid they wanted a kid for so long she wants it to be special for her best friend so yes she was all focused on giving rosemary a great baby shower episode four she's having the baby of course elizabeth's going to be all about rosemary she's gonna right. want to focus all i mean it makes she's elizabeth that's what she yeah. would do yeah but now rosemary has the baby she has lee um, I get that she wants to give them a little bit of a reprieve, you know, but like, my God, just give them their space. It was to the point where Rosemary itself, like, wanted them gone. Like, yeah, she pushed yeah. them out the window, the, not the window, the door. <laughs> and, and she yeah. was like, you guys should have a date. And that's another thing, right? Like, Rosemary has to suggest the date. Yeah. Like, and, the one and with the Elizabeth, Elizabeth's like, really? Like, are you sure? Like, record. Got it. Got it. All right. Sorry, guys. We got cut off, but Div is going to continue um, what she was saying about Rosemary. We don't remember exactly what she was saying. So <laughs> there might be some repeats, but go ahead, Div. I should try. Yeah. So basically, I just feel like she is just ultra focused on Rosemary and it needs to stop. And my worry is that it won't stop right away, at least, because now Rosemary's mother is coming into play. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know if we're going to see her or whatever, but I think that's the next thing that Rosemary's going to deal with. And I hope Elizabeth's not ultra involved in it, but I don't know. At this yeah. point, I really don't know. But I feel like Elizabeth has two girlfriends. She has Rosemary and she has Nathan. Nathan has become like a girlfriend to her. Okay. It's like this, mm -hmm. like it is. Don't worry, guys. I <laughs> Some people were worried by what some of the Nathan fans were saying or what they thought their scenes met they're gonna be disappointed for a second time so let them do their thing it's their own fault especially yeah. if this is the departed ones that are coming back um but anyway yeah I'm like why are we getting these like token Nathan and Elizabeth friend scenes in like every episode it's like every my throat episode. is my throat has been like sore from like having that friendship shoved down my throat okay um but like yeah we're getting like this customary scene in like every episode um where they have to talk where she has to talk to him about um you know like oh jack's asking questions about the other jack big jack um right or or like uh oh you went on your camping trip how was it was it fun um and then here you go you want a muffin like why i don't the care offense. like they got two they got two scenes that i know i'm like everyone's feeding this dude <laughs> oh my God. Um, and they got two scenes in this this episode and i'm like why like what are we gonna do with those what what are we gonna do with those scenes why not no cut yeah. out one or both and give us that conversation that lucas and elizabeth needed to have in the saloon like it's not rocket exactly science. it's not exactly but and like of course it Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go no. ahead. No, I was, I was, my, of course, was pretty much like my exclamation point. But yeah. Okay. I like, okay, so people will say to that argument, like, well, Lucas or Nathan and Elizabeth will always be friends. You know, they're friends. They live in the same town. Yeah, I get it. But like, Rosemary and Nathan are friends, right? Friends, as much as, as much as Elizabeth and Nathan are. They don't have scenes together in every single episode. Two scenes in every episode. Like, it's not necessary. And it, it doesn't have, it doesn't contribute to the storyline at all. The muffin thing. Like, what? 
the muffin? <laughs> like, it doesn't contribute to the storyline. Like, why does that have to be in there? She, but maybe he, so if he needed more screen time because you know it was in his contract, have him have a conversation with Faith. Like, why does it have to be with Elizabeth? And then, like, if Elizabeth, I, I just we're not getting the conversations we need, and we're getting random biscuits and muffins. Like, like who cares? The friendship muffins for or didn't she give rosemary muffins and well I know she did the peace offering thing last season and I think they did a muffin thing in episode yeah. two or three they had the yeah. cookie thing in episode it's like, two it's, like, and... it's fine but like but like it contributes nothing to the story <laughs> and then she's having like a deeper conversation with Nathan than she's had with with Lucas by just being like it seems like this trip was good for you and he is having a deeper conversation with Elizabeth than he's had with Faith by saying, yeah, it was good for me in more than more ways than one. Like they're having this, <laughs> it's not even a deep conversation, but it's deeper than the ones that they've had with their like whatever significant others. <laughs> Man. And then he freaking takes two, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and and we're supposed to find that funny slash cute like that i think it's I mean, like the ice cream episode or the ice cream scene where it's like oh i i figured it was okay now it's like can i have another one like come on honestly okay i'm gonna be really really honest right yeah, now do it do it after this episode the Nathan fans that think that she's going to change her mind have no <laughs> they, they were They were kind of flirting with each other. Like, they kind of have a foothold. They kind of have a reason to be like, oh, maybe she's going to change her mind. I don't think she's going to change her mind. I know she's not going to change her mind. But if I was one of those people who was, like, really yeah. clinging to anything, this is a big one. Well, here's the thing. I did two, like... Like momentarily, I was like, is this flirting? Like, what's going on? But go and watch her scenes with Henry. It's not that different. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really not that different. It's the no, same amount right. of smiling, same amount of. So it can be construed as flirting, yeah. but I feel like she's the same with Henry. Yeah. No, she's not flirting with Henry. No, uh, you're right. So I know I'm so glad we got so much Henry. Like, that's the one thing they did right. Me too. That's Me the too. one thing they need to keep doing. He's a character actually freaking worth exploring. Yes. So complicated, so layered, and we barely get to see Henry. Like, we barely get to see Henry. I, yeah. Anyway, sorry. This, was a, this was a great episode for Henry. No, I agree. For I Henry. really loved to see him, like, joking around and smiling. Like, that made me so happy. I love that so much. And actually, I kind of liked Nathan in this episode. It's a very fleeting, That's what temporary. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What? That's what I mean. Who's saying? Me. Like, oh, I yeah, because you like Nathan. Because away from Elizabeth and away from Faith and like his like love life, whatever he has. He's actually, he's a pretty easygoing guy. Like, we get to see a different side to him. Um, mm -hmm. Like, when he, when, like, the way he was with Joseph and, like, the singing and, like, even with Bill, like, that's the Nathan that I could actually get bored with. Yeah. But not this other, like, lovesick, like, weirdo. Like, I don't want to say anything more than that. But, yeah, yeah like... No. I don't know. I actually liked him. But like I said, it's it's a fleeting yeah. thing. It's, I'm sorry. It's not going to be permanent. Well, but anyway. Um, but like the yeah. contrast between Nathan and Lucas in this episode, though, it's like, I mean, I listen, that, that probably sounds not like how I want it to sound. But like the fact that I kind of liked Nathan in this episode, <laughs> and it's hard for me to like Nathan. Yeah. And I was mad at Lucas. Yep. Is like, yep. Like that is, that is, that is disappointing. That is that miraculous. Is dude. But anyway, but okay, getting into that, I think we need to, um, we need to dive into Lucas. Like what people are like, yeah. well, why are you guys upset at Lucas or whatever? Here's yeah. what I need. I have two words for Lucas. Okay. Two words, man up. 
man up. Like he needs to freaking man up and stop being so submissive. He's yeah. being submissive. And that's not okay either. That's not we can't just feel sorry for him. We have he at some point he needs to sp- like speak up he has this woman on this pedestal i mentioned this last week or not last week in our last episode he thinks she's perfect he it's like she can do no wrong it's like i understand you know like you don't have to explain yourself like yes she fought and yes you need to have a conversation and yes you need to be like elizabeth we need to talk about this what the heck is going on with you maybe it's coming i don't I mean, I I hope it's coming, but he's just kind of like going along with anything and everything she says. And I'm not yeah. okay with that. I don't. Yeah. We all, no. I, so many of us love Lucas more. Yes, I, I know the Lucas fans, like I, I get it, but let's not just gloss over it. I don't like Elizabeth's attitude. I don't like the way she's treating him necessarily. Like some of it, I don't know. I'm not as upset, but let's also not forget that he's not being a man right now he's just kind of taking all the lumps he's like oh i'm gonna treat you like a queen i'm gonna get you this castle i'm not gonna stop trying like dude but okay i want to give mary full credit for this you already know i love mary but i want to give her credit because she pointed this out a while back and like it's stuck in my mind um elizabeth doesn't actually do anything or get proactive unless she knows Lucas is upset Mm -hmm. it's it's like a pattern with them to where she just kind of assumes that you know Lucas will be fine or Lucas will be okay Um, and there's a varying degree of like understanding where he's at Um, but when she knows Lucas is not okay she does something about it because then she knows she's crossed a limit like um, in in season eight when at first in episode one when he came back from his you know walkabout or whatever you want to call it came back from building houses in louisiana um he told her he was like i just want you to be happy which was basically him saying i'll wait for you whatever and then by episode three he's like frustrated and 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 annoyed that she can't make up her mind like she's just kind of dragging him along um so he says you know like what do you know about love what would you know about it and then he walks off and she's like stunned by that she's shell-shocked and then what does she do in the next episode she comes over and she's like I wanted to be the one to reach out and she reaches out and she like smooths it over and she's like I'm sorry about what I did actually it's interesting because I I didn't even fault her for telling Helen or not telling him I'm sorry um for not telling him about oh gosh Sorry. Okay. Yeah, what? my my coworkers are sending a bunch of stuff like it's getting in the way. Okay. So, um Yeah, so basically she she does something about it. Then what happens? He's there like they're dating. I'm ta- I'm still talking about episode I'm um, season 8. They're dating and like things are going kind of at her pace because she's not you know ready to hold hands and she's not ready to become super serious whatever um but then when he comes to her doorstep that night and he says I want I need to set you free it wakes her up she's like you know like you were supposed to be patient with me she's not like accusing him but she's like this man was going to be patient with me he was going to wait for me and now he's giving up on our relationship yes something is definitely wrong what does she do she actually finally has the courage to take that ring off because she realizes how important he is to her so now if lucas actually says I'm not cool with the way you're acting, Elizabeth, or like, let's talk about this. If he actually puts his foot down, he's going to help himself and he's going to help her. But I'm not okay with Lucas just going along with, you know, marching to Elizabeth's drum. That's not okay. Yeah. And I can't, I can't sit here and support him until he actually does something. I can't sit here and pity him as a victim. No. No, I I totally agree. I totally agree with you. And that's what is so frustrating because just like he as a character himself, 
like think about when he came in to Hope Valley in season six. Yeah. Like he he what he was his own person, you know? And like yep. so this is out of character and there is a delicate balance between, you know, mm -hmm. being submissive and putting your foot down and being controlling, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, she, I just, like I said, like, I just, I just wish that this would come about a different way where like he would say, okay, so I tweeted this, something along the lines of like, instead of like, I'm going to build you a house. If it was something like I would do, like, I would build you a castle if you wanted. And then if she bantered back with like, oh, would it have a moat? Yes, of course. Well, I don't need a castle. I just want to be here at home with you, our home, right? And then yep. like have the yep. have them have the strife be them talking through stuff about Jack. Instead of this, like why are mm -hmm. we going back to this like you make these grand gestures and it's so awful. Like oh my god. Yes. Like we did, that. we did a whole Talk podcast about, about this because it was so frustrating at the time when he took her in a hot air balloon and she was like, had a talk with him about it, like oh, about yeah. the grand gestures being too much. And I'm like, dude, like we talked about, like he, what did he, what did he do? He took her to Union City. What's wrong with that? She loved it. And then he took her up in a hot air balloon and she's like, grin gestures like too much it's too much and then so now we're back to this everything is but, too much. yeah it, and it's too much but this one really is like you can't just go build a house without telling her and make her move without yes. telling her so like really both yes. ends of it are just like That's it's true. just it's so like it's just so frustrating like we've been we've been developing these characters together as a couple like really developing them as a couple since season six right mm -hmm. like the love interest to here to now mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we're on year five and we're going back to that it's just yeah. like well this yeah. is what i mean it out of order it's so out of order yes. like are you telling me they haven't talked since they got engaged they haven't talked about where they're gonna live like right. what they're yes. assuming something what the heck right. uh so they're they're discussing wedding details but they haven't talked about what's gonna happen after the wedding it makes this is what i mean like what the heck is going on okay they meet they you know have like this like relationship this dynamic where they're trying to figure each other out and then um they become friends then we start seeing the attraction um at least we start seeing more of it from her right and then we start seeing them going out we see them starting to become more than that then they start dating they become boyfriend girlfriend essentially um and they finally become a couple. And then suddenly I felt like they kind of skipped ahead and then they started, they became an even more serious couple. But I almost felt like they were like acting like a married couple. I don't know. That's why I felt like they should have had dates where the relationship, they're still in that honeymoon phase. So I thought they should have had more dates last season. But now I felt like they played married couple more than a couple that's not yet they weren't even engaged at that point. Um, then they didn't say, I love you for so long, even though we've known that they love each other for so long before that. Right. I'm not phrasing it very well. But, you know, we've known they loved each other for a while. But we don't. they don't actually say it for so long. Why? Yeah. And she assumes he's going to propose and doesn't. And he does, finally. And... I don't know, man. I don't know. And and but since then there's been no communication about what's gonna happen. Like seriously, do you not think about those things? I don't know. I've never been married, but like wouldn't a woman think about all that? Especially if you have a son and a yeah. child, like your package deal. Like, would you not think about unless she just assumed, oh, Lucas is gonna move in with me and that he would have to be okay with it. I don't know. But, and, that's but it seems thing. like they didn't have that conversation at least. No. And they need if to stop assuming. Wanted. They have to stop assuming. 
they keep assuming everything and it's like you can't just assume like yeah like and even even when you're married you can't just assume everything like what like I had to I had to call Ryan today to see if he was taking Ari to practice to football practice like because I'm not going to assume that he's going to because what if he doesn't then he's not going to go to you know like just things like that like you can't just assume like you have to have conversations about stuff especially when it's so big as like you're getting married like where are you going to live you're not going to talk even even if it's not like oh hey where are you going to live are you going to move in with me it's going to be like excitement about like oh when you when we get married and you move in here like we're gonna have dinner together every night and we're gonna get to go to bed to you know like communication about any of that communication is very lacking here um yeah that's the thing I agree with you I don't have a problem with her not wanting to move like I get it and a lot of people have yeah. said they don't have right. the budget or the permits or whatever the heck to, right. to build another set like of okay, course that's fine. not gonna happen yeah, so we know it's not going to happen, but it didn't need to happen the way it did. It didn't have to be like, I hope that you're okay with, you know, right. what I what I want. Um, he's been okay with a lot of what she wants up until now. Yeah. The other thing is, I don't know if by like the memories she had, she's talking about like pre-wedding with Jack because ja- Jack did help renovate that property a lot, right? Her house and stuff. I don't mm-hmm. know what she meant. I don't know, but I will emphasize again, do not make this about Jack at this point earlier fine I get it but at this point if she's gonna like pull back and like be apprehensive about the wedding and moving and all that stuff then I will get mad because right now I'm not super mad I'm just mostly disappointed in the writing in both of them by the way I want to be very clear about that yes I don't like the way Elizabeth's acted but I'm not going to fully defend Lucas unless he stands up for himself I'm just not no I agree I agree. I'm so. I'm just as upset with See, I think that's why I'm upset about this episode is because Lucas is the one that's like I'm upset with. Elizabeth has been kind of like acting this way for a while. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm upset about the way that Lucas was written in this episode. Um Yes. They're both assuming stuff. They're both just like they both want this future that they've planned out for each other without consulting each other but going back to what you said because this has been like a big gripe for both of us the grand gestures we kind of talked about it already but like she goes and whines to rosemary about it what the heck like lucas had another one of his grand gestures like my god woman what is okay i didn't like the way he went about it but is is it's like this she sees this as, as this like perennial fault with him almost like till he goes to his grave she's always going to have that issue with him I feel like and I don't know why they made it such a bad thing such a wrong I don't, thing I don't either that's what I I really don't understand that like why are these grand gestures a like a bad thing I I like remember how frustrated we were about that yeah when that first happened in season nine was it nine Mm-hmm. We did a we did an entire podcast episode about it because it was just like what is going on, um, and now yeah, she's turned him insecure because of that though. Because remember yeah. we had the the surprise party, the surprise celebration after her book got published. Yeah, and he felt bad about it. He felt bad about it, and then for the wedding or not wedding, I'm sorry, for her birthday, he was like, "Oh, I learned my lesson. I'm not gonna do a surprise party." I'm like, "Why? Yeah. What was so wrong with it?" I do not get it. I just don't. So, yeah. I don't want him to second guess like offending her all the time. I just I know. really don't. Want him. Maybe it'll change. You know, I really hope the people who are actually watching this who've stayed with us this far are okay with what we're saying because some people are like very okay and happy with whatever the writers feed them yeah but and that's fine I mean people can disagree with us that's 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 totally fine fine. if they're happy with the writing good for them I mean I would never want to take that away but hopefully they're not watching us because we're gonna keep it real we're gonna this is our uncut version pretty much except for when we got cut off (laughs) yeah no yeah I know and I and I know a lot of people feel this way which is why we wanted to do this 
yeah like now so that we can kind of like decompress with everybody else because I usually don't feel this way usually I stay very positive about stuff and like other people are frustrated about stuff and I'm like well it's you know Mm -hmm. um but but I have feelings about this Mm -hmm. like I literally have not been so upset (laughs) about this show yeah like probably since Jack died to be honest I'm so disappointed with the way that they wrote Lucas mostly, but okay. I mean, and also Elizabeth, I'm also frustrated with Elizabeth. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you really look at her character development, like look at like, she, she was not like this. She was never like this. No, no. She's been like this, um, you know, more recently, but with this new she writer, did not, she did not start out like I don't know, thinking only of herself. Which I'm not saying like wanting to live next door to Rosemary and like in town with her community is selfish necessarily. No, but, but like she said it herself, she was like, "You're a dreamer, Lucas, and I would never want to." I can't remember exactly Clip her words. Your wing. Like I would never, I would never want to. Was it Clip Your Wing? No, I don't think so. Oh. Um, that was probably another show. Um, but she's like, yeah. she's like literally doing that, though. She's like, I would never want to stop you from being a dreamer. But like, but that's what's frustrating, though, is like, so he, he could have brought it to her in a different way. Mm-hmm. And then we would feel more like empathy for him when Mm -hmm. she's like no you know like I just wish they would do it together like they would make these decisions together but then like like I said two weeks ago he was like Hope Valley is our home two weeks ago he came to that Mm -hmm. conclusion on his own without talking to Elizabeth and she's like yeah like so relieved like yes I couldn't I couldn't agree more Mm -hmm. and then and then two weeks later he's building her a house outside of town like it just it just I loved like her I loved her last season um when they ha- when they were having that sleepover at her house and mm-hmm. she was like someday I hope you can have the life you've always wanted that's the Elizabeth I love because yeah. that was her thinking about how he didn't have the same childhood that she had that mm-hmm. he came from a home where he was neglected um, and that he'd been searching for love and that he had just been kind of lost and, you know, just kind of traveling the world, not knowing, not feeling like he belonged anywhere. Right. And then she's like, okay, I want us to have that home. I want us to have that kind of marriage. And now suddenly it's like, no, this is going to be a home. I have to be okay with it because this is what I want. Yeah what the heck but also it doesn't mean he gets to do what he wants either it doesn't mean you get to decide oh we're gonna live outside of town and I'm gonna build us a house a nice right. big mansion castle right. yeah also and I did they have to make her say it would never be home like what what like that is the worst way they could have delivered that Mm -hmm. it would never be home like think about the way that he feels literally like the whole the whole thing is like home is where the heart is right Mm -hmm. and like and then and then after that for it to be a home what does she need Right, like, like that's the whole like romantic idea behind any romance. It's like you are my home, yes. right? I'm home wherever you are, like wherever we are. That's yes. my home. And she said to him, "If you build me a house, it will never be home." That is like the worst punch in the gut. And then, and then she yeah, goes and tells Rosemary, space? "Yeah." And then she goes and tells Rosemary, like, I think Lucas understands, you know, like neighbors and friends are what's important. Neighbors and friends are what's important. Not family. Since when did Rosemary's precedence over 
when did he when did rosemary become such a huge priority i get it they're best friends they're like sisters yeah, yeah, i get yeah. it but yeah. seriously you're going to like build your whole life with her happiness and her needs in mind i don't get that i just yeah. don't i don't yeah and and i can see it changing like like if they were if lucas and elizabeth were talking about like building a home together somewhere again this is a flaw on lucas by not including her in this situation in this in this decision um if they were to decide this together to build a home she has land by the way that she has but apparently mm -hmm. not told him about she has land mm -hmm. that they have never addressed so if they were to discuss this together and they and she says hey listen i have land and he's like let's build a house together like because luke or jack and elizabeth were so excited to build a house together she didn't even know like, it was a they were like that he, bought it. he was like he was like we're gonna build this huge house and she's like how big and he's like big enough to hold the whole whole thornton clan and they were so excited about it so like if, <laughs> if they decided this together they were gonna build a house together and then they both witnessed rosemary having the coming into this like whatever like postpartum depression and it sounds like she's kind of coming into they both witnessed this together and then they both you know, looked at each other and decided we have to stay next to her. We have to stay. Yes. That's great. I mean, obviously that takes care of the problem of like, they can't build another set. Okay. So they're going to stay next door, but like yeah, the whole, like, I'm going to build you a house. Cause I know nothing about like literally last week he was joking about the five tier cake because he knew she would think it was too much. And then he's mm -hmm. going to go just like surprise Builder her mansion mansion like what the heck and here's the thing right we people move away from their best friends all the time neighbors yeah. who are best friends they move away all the time things change circumstances change yeah suddenly your spouse becomes your priority you're yeah. you're literally supposed to that is how it should be i'm not like saying i'm her. not justifying that you know they have to go live in lucas's house you know on the edge of town i'm just saying her saying that it's yeah. not gonna be home for her come on oh my gosh i that i think is where i was like like are you serious did you really just say that that yeah. it would never be home because you have too many too many memories here like also elizabeth moved into that house it was abigail's house and she moved into it when abigail was still around yeah and like i i it just it just does not line up it doesn't add up yeah how much longer do we have um six minutes okay we have six minutes should we wind up uh tell me what yeah. i kind of right. i think i went through all my points for the most part but yeah do your thing oh okay so then they literally babysat a newborn baby together and they had <laughs> zero dialogue none not even a word she's holding mm -hmm. the baby and he comes over to the baby and like it was cute he like like pet her little head with his finger yeah. and then no words yeah. like what are we doing that's such an opportunity for them to be like oh wouldn't wouldn't it be great to have one of these someday or something like just they just like they didn't talk and then oh there's a knock at the door no dialogue yeah i'm just i'm just the are really short. and then really and choppy. then i have what the scenes are very really short they're very really choppy even the conversation between lee and lucas i'm sorry i kind of changed it a little bit go back to what you're saying well, hold but on i can't I can't what? really hear I can't really hear you. Now? Um, yeah. I think you so. can hear me better now. Yeah. Okay. No, I was just gonna say they, they cut out as much dialogue as possible and they keep it kind of specious. Have you noticed? It's like they don't talk about deep stuff a lot. Like they just kind of I don't know. Say Are what you were gonna say. You mean Lucas and Lee? I mean, in general, too, the way they're writing oh, it, I feel yeah. some characters are getting more depth than others. Like, Henry's getting depth. I love that, because I love yeah. Henry. But Rosemary's also getting too much. It's like they're forgetting that this is Elizabeth's 
story a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. Um, my point was actually what I was trying to say is that Lee and Lucas start talking about Rosemary, you know, Lee's relationship with Rosemary. This is when she's about to have the baby. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really go anywhere. Lucas has no dialogue. Lucas says yeah. nothing back. I know. That, that was a, an opportunity for like a like a very deep man to man conversation where Lucas actually reassures Lee that everything's gonna be okay. Instead, yeah. Lucas just stares back at him and it's like he's like, mm-hmm. read my mind. Yep. Yep. And even, even like he's on the floor with little Jack and little Jack wants ice cream instead of lunch. And he's like, no, let's eat lunch first. And then he's like, well, did you know my daddy? And he's like, you know what? Let's have ice cream. Like, yeah. What the hell is that about? I don't know. I don't know. And then, yeah, I just, okay. So here are some, some other like little flaws in the, in the writing that don't have to do with Luke's and Elizabeth. Hold on one second. Let me check out time. We have three minutes left, but like, okay. So little, like Sarah was, I don't know if you noticed this the first time around. Cause I, I was like, so distracted the first time around. Like I didn't notice half the things, but Sarah, Robert's little sister was like concerned about her plant because she was like leaving town. She's scared. She's going to leave town. And I'm like, didn't, didn't they already establish that they're staying? And then she was like telling Elizabeth, like, I, I just don't want to like leave my plant here. It's going to be, you know, lonely or whatever. And Elizabeth is like, I don't think, I don't think you're going to be leaving. I'm like, she's not leaving. So like, just why are you saying like, I don't think you're going to be leaving. I just like, like little things like that. I'm just like, I like, is there some sort of like huge disconnect? Like, was this episode supposed to come like episode two or something? Like, I just don't get it. I just don't get it and then um yeah also why don't we have a name for the baby she's <laughs> weeks old why it's can't Rose- they just tell us the name rosemary would have so many ideas for names by now like i'm surprised she didn't already have like a book of babies or something book of baby I, names she said there are know. so many options like there are so many options but like She's three weeks old, and they're still calling her baby. Like, no, and then then she looks at Lee because she didn't like Lee's suggestions. So it's almost like, no, it has to be what I want again. Mm -hmm. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I was, I was like, oh, I can't wait to hear what the baby's name is, and then we didn't hear it, and I was like, oh my gosh, like what the heck? And then I rewatched it, and it was like three weeks. Can you believe it's been three weeks? And I'm like, she's three weeks old, and she still doesn't have a name. You are not, you're not calling your daughter by her name. Oh my gosh. And then, and then I just had my last note is why is Elizabeth giving Nathan muffins? Why is she giving him muffins? That's my last note. I don't need an answer for that one. I just don't. I, uh, maybe she's doing community service. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I would have rather she like taken it and given it to Newton because Newton's not going to get a muffin. Did you hear yeah, yeah two like, muffins. horses don't eat muffins. Yeah, horses don't eat sure. Muffins. Whatever. Uh, well, we have less than a minute. Oh my gosh! Shoot. Okay. Should I'm I good. Wrap it up? Are okay. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Wrap it up. Okay. Thanks so much for decompressing with us, you guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry if this was like too negative for you, but like, <laughs> just but let's hang in there. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be good. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. We have faith. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> it's going to be fine, okay. guys. Okay. Okay. Okay.